In this episode of European Capitals Challenge, ever wanted to go to Europe's last dictatorship? Ever wanted to go to the single coolest KFC restaurant in the whole Ooh, entire world? Yeah. Ever wanted to go somewhere where their national library turns into a giant disco every single night? Welcome to Minsk, Belarus. Let's go over the basics. So here over in Eastern Europe, this is Belarus and Minsk is located here. Now, what is there to do in Minsk? Well, there's the National Library, great for. There's the circus statues, great for seeing animal cruelty. That poor turtle, oh. There's the great patriotic war museum, great for all things World War II. There's that Soviet feeling with everything, great for the Iron Curtain, and then there's all these as well. Alright then, let's go over a little bit of Minsk history. So it's going to look like something like this. 1067, Minsk gets founded as a bunch of mud huts. And later, the Polish invade, the Russians invade, the Soviets take over. World War II happens and everything gets destroyed. And today, it's under the dictatorship of Alexander Lukashenko, who seems to be in power what can only be described as forever. How do you get into Minsk? Chances are that you will need a visa. Unless you are, well, Russian, the visa itself isn't too bad to get. But the real drawbacks are, one, you have to fly into Minsk airport, there's no other way to actually enter the country, and two, the visa only lasts for five days, plus the day of arrival and day of leaving counts as your five days. So you've only really got three full days, which is plenty of time for Belarus. The single greatest thing about Minsk is, oh my god, the architecture. Just look at this. Epic Soviet architecture. Just look at it. Wow! Epic museum architecture. This looks like a Soviet solar power plant mixed with a crystal maze. Epic church architecture. Just look at this. It's like a Russian Orthodox rocket or spaceship. And then there's epic Minsk metro architecture. All the stations are clean, efficient, and they put their other undergrounds to shame. So the bad thing about Minsk kind of goes like this. Love traveling, love seeing new places, Love meeting new people, and then love visiting and financially contributing to places that are run by an autocratic government, ready to jail any opposition, and violently limits the freedoms of its own citizens. Uh, yeah, not really into that. Well, get ready for Western guilt. And you know all those freedoms that you know and love? Um, yeah, kinda can't do them anymore. The strangest thing about Minsk is that everything is absolutely perfect everything is so sterile it's literally like you're inside a computer game so for example you'll be stood there in a crowd waiting to cross the road you'll look left you'll look right and there won't be a car anywhere in sight but still nobody will cross the road until there's a green light to do so hmm i wonder why that is and the streets, the streets are immaculate. They are perfectly clean. The strangest thing is there are no bins anywhere either. So God knows where all the rubbish goes, but it just looks fake. I mean, this is what a real street looks like. So what to get from Minsk? Minsk is full of weird and wonderful things, but in a country full of fields and then straw, the best thing to get is straw animals. Just look at them, the craftsmanship, the quality. These are the best souvenir that I've personally ever come across. Look at that, it's a chicken, it's a horse. Amazing. Where's the best place to go outside of Minsk? Well, do you like Soviet architecture? And do you like giant heads? Head towards Brest, where you can see Brest Fortress. You can see World War II ruins and this giant concrete, steel and stone angry head person. It's relatively interesting. Let's round this off with the final city scores. Does Minsk have a natural landmark? <laughs> no. Does Minsk have a natural object? Eh, uh, no. Does Minsk have a built landmark? Sure does. Gonna go for Minsk Gate. 
It's big, it's imposing, it's cold. Again, it's that Soviet architecture. Does Minsk have a historical object? Nope. And then does Minsk have a traditional or modern art masterpiece? Uh, no and no. So overall, Minsk comes out with a score of one, but for having the best goddamn souvenir ever, again, straw chicken, bonus point, Minsk comes out at two. Yay! So if you want a city with some of the best buildings you'll ever see, as squeaky clean as a level four biosafety laboratory, and with a chance of violent state crackdowns, then head over to Minsk. Coming up next, we're going to look into Skopje, North Macedonia. Whoa! If you've enjoyed this video, here's a picture of a dolphin that you can look at whilst you like and subscribe. Thanks, bye!